Hello everyone. In this video, I will be discussing requirements elicitation techniques. The learning objective of this video is that after watching, students should be able to define the role that each requirement elicitation technique plays in determining requirements. There are five different types of requirements gathering techniques. Before we start, I'd like to share some good tips in practice. First, use every interaction with managers and users to garner interest, support, and enthusiasm for the project. Second, choose participants carefully. And finally, make respectful use of people's time. Requirements gathering more than any other task in the systems development lifecycle is where you need to most focus on people skills and good relationships. Now let's talk about each of the requirements gathering techniques in detail. First, interviews. Interviews are the most important and most used fact-finding technique. System analysts often collect information from individuals face-to-face. -face. Who should analysts interview? Managers and upper management should be interviewed early in the project to get a broad understanding of the system and processes. Lower level staff should also be interviewed to provide more details and specifics later of how the day-to-day -day work is carried out. Remember that political issues can be important as well. It might be necessary to interview influential people, even if they're not too knowledgeable about the day-to-day -day work. When you're interviewing, make sure to match the type of question you use to the person that you're interviewing. For example, if you're interviewing a manager, keep questions broad and high level. If you're interviewing staff, ask questions about day-to-day -day work. There are several ways to structure an interview. The most common way is the top-down approach. That is, start with really broad questions and then get more specific. Another way to do it is the bottom-up approach. This way is useful for collecting details. There are three types of questions that you can ask in interviews. One question type is not necessarily better than the other. Just consider the types of questions that you want to ask depending on what you want to find out. There are open-ended questions. These are good for finding out broad concepts and opinions. And there are closed-ended questions. These are good for learning or confirming facts and details. It's good when you're using the top-down approach to start with open-ended questions and then move to some closed-ended questions to make sure you understand the exact details. Finally, it's important to ask probing questions. These are questions that resolve confusion or follow up on answers to previous questions. Probing questions are often ad hoc, whereas the rest of your questions should be carefully prepared before the interview. Here are some practical tips for interviewing people in the organization. First, I can't stress enough the importance of preparing before the interview. Don't waste the interviewee's time. The people you'll be interviewing are busy. Preparation will help with this. Next, take notes during and after the interview. It's really easy to forget key details. Don't be afraid to ask for clarification. I've had experiences in my own career where I didn't ask questions because I didn't want to look stupid, honestly. But then later on, it came back to haunt me because I wasn't able to address the client's needs. It's better to ask questions earlier. Be aware of nonverbal cues such as body language. You can tell a lot about what the person thinks about an old system or the system that you're going to be developed based on their reactions to your questions. Finally, it's important that you send an interview summary back to the person you interviewed as soon as possible. Request a confirmation and any suggestions or corrections. To summarize, here are some strengths and weaknesses of interviewing as a requirements gathering technique. The strengths of an interview are, first, that an interviewee can respond freely and openly to questions, and, they, and they can easily be asked for more feedback. Questions can be adapted and reworded for each individual. Finally, interviewees' nonverbal communication can also be observed, which is more helpful than you might think. There are also some weaknesses of interviewing as a requirements gathering technique. First, interviewing can be very time consuming and therefore costly. Second, success is highly dependent on the systems analyst's human relations skills, which takes a lot of practice. Finally, it may be impractical to interview everyone due to the location of interviewees. The second technique I'd like to discuss is questionnaires. Questionnaires are special purpose documents that allow the analyst to collect information and opinions from respondents. They're also known as surveys. Questionnaires are mass produced and distributed. Respondents complete the questionnaire on their own time. Facts are collected from a large number of people while maintaining uniform responses. 
When dealing with a large audience, especially if it involves customers outside of the organization, no other fact-finding technique can tabulate the same facts as efficiently. When designing questionnaires, think about how you will analyze the results of those questionnaires. Use a variety of question formats. You can use fixed format questions. These are those that are similar to a multiple choice exam question. Respondents must be able to anticipate potential answers to these questions. It's really easy to tabulate the results of fixed format questions. Questionnaires can also include free format questions. These are like essay questions on an exam. They're open-ended. Responses are unpredictable, and it's harder to tabulate the results. So use free format questions cautiously. Here are some practical tips for designing questionnaires. To develop a good questionnaire, determine which facts and opinions must be collected and from whom you should get them. It's hard to get follow-up, so make sure that you word your question carefully the first time. Based on the needed facts and opinions, determine whether free or fixed format questions will produce the best answers. Sometimes a mix of types is the best. Pretest your questions on a small sample of typical respondents, not just other analysts. Make sure that your questionnaire is going to go over well and that the answers you get back will not be confusing. Finally, understand that response rates are often low, usually less than 50%. Let's summarize the strengths and weaknesses of questionnaires. Most questionnaires can be answered quickly if they're properly designed which is a good time saver and employees will appreciate that. Questionnaires are relatively inexpensive and they allow individuals to maintain anonymity, which oftentimes will lead to more honesty than in face-to-face -face interviews. Questionnaires can be tabulated and analyzed quickly, again, if they're properly designed. The weakness of a questionnaire is that response is often low. How can you motivate employees to participate in questionnaires? In some organizations, some incentives might be necessary. Questionnaires also tend to be inflexible, and it's hard to get personalized feedback or ask follow-up questions. Body language can't be observed, and you can't clarify a vague or incomplete answer to any question. Finally, there's a large upfront cost, as it's difficult to prepare a successful questionnaire. Let's break for a second before we talk about the other three requirements gathering techniques. If you're thinking of doing an interview or questionnaire, you might wonder, where do I start? Start with business requirements. You should have a fair idea of the high-level business requirements from the system's request. Ask questions to understand how the current system fails to meet those business requirements and where possible improvements can be made. Think, when reading the system request, what details are missing? How will system requirements meet the business requirements? You can also start by thinking about the as-is system or process. By asking questions about how things currently work, you'll gain insights and or you can ask probing questions into where the current system falls short and how the new system can improve. We'll talk more about requirements gathering strategies in the next video. The third technique for gathering systems requirements is JAD, Joint Application Development. JAD is also sometimes referred to as Joint Application Design. JAD is an extensive structured group process. The goal is to complete requirements definition document as a group. You directly involve the project sponsor, key managers, and key users with the systems analysts. All of these people come together in one session. Ideally, a JAD session should have a trained facilitator and a comfortable facility for long-term intensive group work. JAD is expensive, but valuable. You can run into some typical group work issues, such as groupthink, people being hesitant to share opinions, or a lack of consensus when people want to stick to their individual preferences. One way to overcome some of these group weaknesses is to use electronic JAD, or EJAD. EJAD helps groups overcome group dynamic issues, such as dominance, status difference, and fear of reprisal. When people sit in groups, they're usually not as eager to share information as they are in one-on-one -on -one interviews. Electronic JAD provides ways for members to contribute, comment on, and rate ideas anonymously. However, it does require a trained EJAD facilitator and some specialized groupware software. What are the strengths and weaknesses of JAD? The strength is that you can understand multiple perspectives at once. You have managers, users, and analysts sitting down together, and you can work out differences. It's also nice to have immediate user feedback while you are preparing documentation. However, there are several weaknesses of JAD. 
It requires a facilitator. It can take valuable time away from people's other work, and careful coordination is required. The next technique for gathering requirements is observation. This refers to when analysts participate in or watch a person perform their activities to learn about the system. For example, an analyst might sit down with a staff member and watch him or her do their daily work. It's nice to use observation when the validity of data collected using other methods is in question. Sometimes people have a hard time explaining things or don't even realize all the key details of their work. If you ask them in a questionnaire or an interview how long something takes them to do, they might have a hard time estimating it, and you'll get a better idea by actually observing them. Use observation when the complexity of certain aspects of the system prevents end users from providing clear explanations. Here are some practical tips if you decide to observe people. To do observation well, you need to properly plan ahead of time. Obtain approval and inform people what your purpose is in observing them. Conduct observations first under a normal workload, but also consider conducting observations when people are under busy or stressed conditions. Obtain samples of documents or forms that will be used by those being observed, so you can better understand what's going on. Finally, as with the interview, review your observation notes with the appropriate individuals. Let's summarize some strengths and weaknesses of using observation as a requirements gathering technique. Data that is gathered might be highly reliable because you are seeing the work process in action. You can see exactly what's being done. An observation is relatively inexpensive compared with other fact-finding techniques. The reason I say data gathering might be highly reliable is that people might perform differently when they're being observed. Some people get nervous about being watched. Work can also vary in difficulty and volume, so it's hard to get an exact picture by only observing once. Finally, some activities may take place at odd times and you might not observe them during your formal observation period. And the tasks being observed are subject to various types of interruptions. The last common technique for gathering requirements is document analysis. This means that you take a document that the organization is currently using, whether that's paper or digital, and you collect facts from that existing documentation. For example, you could look at an organizational chart, screens of the current system or print out of paper forms like invoices or sales receipts, or documentation of previous system studies and designs performed by systems analysts and consultants in the past. It's important that you determine how current the documents are. Even outdated documentation may be useful, but recognize what is current and what is outdated. If you're looking at an old paper form, consider that the form might be used in a different way than it used to be. Clarify all these types of assumptions directly with the users. Analyze to understand. Take notes, draw pictures, and use systems analysis and design tools to model what you're learning or proposing for the system. To employ document analysis well, learn as much as you can from existing documentation. No one wants to spend time talking about things you could have learned about from existing documentation. In other words, don't use an interview to ask people what kinds of information they have on their sales receipts. Simply request a sales receipt and note that information for yourself. Let's summarize document analysis as a requirements gathering technique. The strengths are that it's easy to find non-functional requirements, and it's also easy to find information-based functional requirements. Looking at a form makes it easy to tell what kind of information needs to be saved in the system. However, it's harder to see process-based functional requirements. While you might see what type of information needs to be stored, it's harder to see what is done with that information once it's collected. Functions and characteristics of the current system might be different than what is wanted or needed in the new system. So use document analysis to understand, not necessarily to define new requirements. See if you can fill out this table on your own, based on what you've learned so far about the five different types of requirements gathering techniques. As you can see, each of the five techniques have their strengths and weaknesses. Be sure to study this table carefully.